Hello, everybody. Hopefully you're in the right room, storyboard. Not looking for container stuff right now or anything. Um, so we're going to introduce ourselves real quick. I'll go over the agenda, and then we'll just dive right in. Uh, I'm Kendall Nelson. I work at the OpenStack Foundation. And one of my primary directives right now is to get the community migrated from Launchpad over to Storyboard. So, Hi, I'm Zara Zymesh. I've been working on Storyboard and OpenStack for a couple of years now as a core on Storyboard. And I'm really boring, so I have nothing <laughs> else to say. Adam. Um, I'm Adam Koldrick. I'm a software engineer working at a company called CodeThink in Manchester in the UK. Um, I've been a core developer on Storyboard for about two years now. Awesome. So basically, we're just going to go through things, uh, why we're migrating. Uh, we'll get into how we actually test and make sure that you can migrate, and then how we do that. And then we'll kind of teach you a little bit about how to use Storyboard. So without further ado, why Storyboard? Well, so as we all know, Launchpad has its idiosyncrasies and things we've gotten used to over the years. Um, it's not really set up for cross-project collaboration, and so Storyboard is specifically designed to fit the OpenStack use case. So it's, it's much better at cross-project coordination for larger initiatives and stuff. Um, since the repo is in OpenStack, we can more quickly address issues where before we had to go and talk to Canonical about getting some things fixed up. Fixed up. Um, and also, uh, storyboard is API first, meaning that it's just a Python API at, it, at its core. It plugs into a database and you can access it from a bunch of different clients. So if you don't like the GUI that we have, you can write scripts to do your own web client. Um, and since Launchpad is getting less and less support from Canonical, we want to you know, move over and, and kind of take control of our own destiny. And we'll also, it'll help us unify our tools. We'll use OpenStack Ideas, the authentication service for everything now, instead of having to have Ubuntu One and OpenStack ID. So, kind of migration process now. Um, so, we really have like three questions before we can migrate you at this point. Uh, the first one is, is your project really cross project with the bugs that you have filed. If so, uh, we need to migrate you and the other projects you are uh, beholden to all at once. Otherwise, um, we have some issues with the migration process. So if you're pretty standalone, we can definitely move you right now. Um, also, if your project is managed by the VMT, it's harder because we don't have all of the privacy uh, needs implemented yet for tasks and stories. It's an ongoing process. We have a couple patches merged right now. It's one of our bigger focuses. And so that should be done soon, and we can start taking those projects over that are managed by the VMT. Uh, the third question is, we, we actually run a test migration into a dump of the production uh, database, just to make sure that there aren't any other smaller bugs that are specific to your project. Um, we want to get all those addressed before we move you over, so we uh, look into that as well. And if the answer is no to all of these questions, we can migrate you right now. Uh, could even do it later if Jeremy's free, <laughs> if you really wanted to. But uh, oh, just give us an email or drop into the storyboard channel and we can definitely talk about that and, and get you on the list of interested projects. So, um, Go to the next one. Okay. So uh, once you know that we can migrate you, we basically set a date to migrate. Um, and we're currently kind of trying to organize into groups of like three or four just to save resources and time. But um, at a certain point, we'll get to, we won't be able to go like one at a time. It'll be like the last large group of projects will all have to go at once because they're all interrelated, as the first question on the previous slide mentions. Um, and so basically the process is really simple. We have to change one thing in project config. We just set use a storyboard to true. And then at that point, we run our migration scripts and it moves all of the bugs over into your new storyboard project. Um, at this point, we don't move the blueprints over and it hasn't been a problem for a lot because 
of the, the nature of the work is really similar and what tasks and stories are is uh, easier way of organizing things and Launchpad kind of forced you into using blueprints to kind of keep your work organized. So um, if, if it's something that you think you would need for your project, you can talk to us and we'll look into adding that into the migration scripts. Um, so after that, basically, there's no more need to use Launchpad and you are home free. At this point, we've migrated RefStack and Manaska in the Interop working group. And we also have Shade and Infra has been using Storyboard for several releases at this point. So um, there is there's stability there. And so now we'll move on to actually using Storyboard. Okay. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about what the things in Storyboard are and how you use it. So the main thing is a story. Um, a story is a goal or a set of requirements. It's a high level view of why you want to do some piece of work. So it can be quite broad. And then within a story, you have one or more tasks required to complete the story. The tasks will be like what you do. They're specific units of work and I'll come back to them in a minute, but yeah, they're more finely grained. A story can be relevant to multiple projects at a time. In a lot of task trackers, you have um, items of work that you place in projects, um, those would be your stories. But in Storyboard, a storyboard doesn't a story doesn't have a project, and you don't put it in a project. Instead, you relate a story to its projects because stories are essentially cross-project. We are here to promote cross-project collaboration. So, I'm going to go and show you a video now about creating a new story, and you can see how they relate. Um, so this should be playing when it loads. Cool, it loaded. Um, so you go to the top, you click Create New and Story, and you can then put a title in for your story. As you create the story, you'll see it makes a default task below that's automatically filled in with the title matching the story, and you select a project for that task. That's so you can find which projects the story will affect so that it's indexed, otherwise people have no way of knowing whether a story is relevant to them. Projects in OpenStack tend to correspond to Git repositories um, and then project groups of the related um, repositories so that teams can see what things they kind of need to do. Um, because normally, yeah, a, project, a repository is kind of under the purview of some specific teams. So yeah, that creates a story. As you can see, it's very broad. It's fix a bug I found in search and the task just matches that name for now because we'll make a more finely grained task later. So on to tasks. So, Tasks are small, specific units of work. They're what you're doing. And a really easy way to think about tasks is that they're one kind of git commit each. So when you send a patch to Garrett, you would like give it a task idea if you want to associate it with the task. And then it's yeah a very small, specific thing that you can track. Each task itself is associated with the project because, as I said, projects are git repos. So then you're sending a task to that specific project and the task being the commit. It's, yeah, related that way. Um, different tasks in the same story can be associated with different projects so that you end up with a story that spans several projects and it's really easy to see which projects it affects. Um, and yeah, as we went over in the video, you, one task with so associated with a project will create, be created every time you create a story and you can then edit the details of that later. Tasks in Storyboard are the things that have statuses. So you wouldn't really change a story status, you change the task status, and then the story status is dependent on the tasks. So tasks are the things that are like, the statuses here are it to do, in review, merged. Again, they correspond to the statuses of patches in Garrett. And yeah, if you put a patch up and you associate it with a task idea, it will then automatically change the Storyboard to say it's in review. And then when that patch gets merged, it can automatically change to be merged. You can also change them manually for the cases where a task doesn't perfectly map to a git commit. So say you have researched this thing and you know roughly what repository you need to look it up in and you want to keep track to make sure that that's happening, but there isn't a commit that's going to be sent once that's researched. I mean, ideally you'd have a docs commit for that, but if for some reason that's, there is no code for that, then that's what would happen there. Um, if you want to add extra tasks to a story, there are two ways of doing it, and I will show you a video for how that works. So, when again it loads? Yeah, you both videos work. Okay, so here we have adding a task in the same project. So for Storyboard, we have two projects, the 
one that's called Storyboard and one that's called a Storyboard Web Client because we have both an API and a UI. So there, that's creating a, a task in the same project, which would be the API. And it's change a parameter name in the API. However, there are two places where we would need to make a change here to make people see it in Storyboard and the other one is in the Web Client. So we have a separate repository for the Web Client. So we have a project for that and we can create a task associated with that project. So then we have an associated thing, update parameter name in the web client as well. And you save that task, as you can see, it's a add task affecting this project or affects other project to create tasks that affect different projects. Now you might notice there is, you can kind of see it on the drop of the video, although we didn't demonstrate it, there's a little drop down to change the task, menu, ID, um, task statuses either manually, and that would also be the place where you would see the task status changing if it changed automatically. But there is no priority field, and this is intentional. There is a very long blog post on why this is the case, um, but the key is that we want multi-dimensional priority, and you, to, get pri to demonstrate priority in Storyboard, you put tasks in a work list, and I will hand over to Adam, who will explain work lists and boards. <laughs> <laughs> so, work lists are just ordered lists of tasks and stories. Um, anyone can create a work list. Anyone can create as many work lists as they want. There's no limit on how many work lists someone can make. There's no limit on what can go in a work list. It can be any task or story in storyboard that you can see. Um, and they're not limited to just one person either. You can make your work list available to be used by other people. So you can either add someone as a user for the work list, which lets them add new cards to the work list or move things around in the work list or remove things from the work list. Or you can make someone an owner, which can do all the same things, but they can also change the priorities themselves and manage the title and whether it's private or not, which a private work list can only be seen by the people who are users or owners. Um, and they can make it automatic as well, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so they're very flexible. Some example use cases, you could, you, anything from a small personal to-do list of the tasks that you hope to get done this week, all the way to a project team making a work list to represent, to hold all the stories that they want to get sorted in a certain milestone. Um, we, as Zara said, um, there's no global priority in Storyboard, so we use work lists for that. Um, anyone can make a work list, so this means that anyone can express priority by putting their tasks in a work list. I could make a work list something like Adam's priorities, and because a work list is ordered, then I can fill it with tasks and put the most important task to me at the top, or the most important few tasks near the top kind of thing. Um, and then other folk can come along and think, oh, I really care about Adam's priorities. And they can come find my work list, or I can link them to my work list. And then they can subscribe to my work list. If they subscribe to my work list, then when they go look at a story with a task that's in that work list, or if the story itself is in the work list, then they'll be able to see, oh, this task is in the top position in Adam's priorities. And they think, oh, I, I should probably care about that. And he'll be my friend if I fix this bug then. Um, so. Yeah, that's, that's just one person's priorities. People might care about multiple people's priorities at once, like if they have to wear different hats or if they have a boss who's got some different priorities to the upstream core team or whatever. Um, and so the boss could then make, make a work list of things that they care about and their priorities, and you could subscribe to both and then find stories, oh, this is in both people's work lists. That's probably a good place to start. Um, so. We also have automatic work lists, which I mentioned, which don't have order. Um, <laughs> automatic work lists are automatically populated at runtime with tasks and stories that match filters that you can set on each, like, to, yeah. <laughs> I'll show a video of how we go about it. So it's very similar to creating a story. Just create a work list, give it a title. You can make it private. You can make it automatic. We'll do that in a sec and save changes, and woo, we have a work list. Um, you can populate it with cards by add, add a card, or you can edit it, which we'll do in a second. Um, <laughs> add a card, um, you search for tasks by name, so we'll find the parameter tasks that we created just a second ago. Um, add, the, add these items to the work list, 
and now we have a work list with some items in. We can drag these up and down. Um, we can add other things to the work list. Just pick some random tasks from this test instance of Storyboard that I was using. Um, again, we can move the tasks up and down. So this could represent my priorities, for example. I could find the web client bug is really important to fix. Um, so we can also add a user to Storyboard. We'll add Zara to a uh, work list. <laughs> we'll add Zara to this one. I don't know why Zara would want to edit Adam's work list, but maybe she does. Um, we can remove tasks, and just by clicking the cross on the task card, um, and we can make it automatic. We'll make this work list into the, like a to-do list for me. So we want it to contain tasks which are assigned to me and also are, have the status to do. Have the status to do. <laughs> and then when we click Save, it's now populated, instead of the manual tasks, it's now got automatically populated with things that are assigned to me and have status to do in this instance. So we also have boards in Storyboard, which provide a Kanban board kind of functionality, kind of like a Trello board, um, a bunch of lanes you can put cards in. The, the cards are basically tasks or stories. Um, very similar to, it's almost like a multi-dimensional work list kind of thing. You can drag the cards between. Um, <laughs> they have the same permission system as work lists. Um, so you can set folks to be users and they can move cards around, or you can set them to be owners and they can move lanes around and change the permissions and such like. We also have automatic boards. Um, so this is done on a lane by lane basis. So you can set filters on a lane just the same way as you do with the work list to make this lets you, for example, make an automated dashboard of a project, for example. You can have a board with lanes which are the backlog for a given project and the things that are in progress for a given project, the things that are in review for a given project. It lets you get a good, quick, at a glance overview of things without actually having to bother moving cards around a board. And you could also use it just to have like, from a project management perspective, a list automatically populated with lists of things that certain engineers are doing. So you could have a lane, not really Kanban style functionality, like Adam's tasks and Zara's tasks and some engineer three's tasks kind of thing. Um, so I'll show a video of making a board. It's a very similar process to making a work list. Just add, a, create a new board, give it a title, give it a description if you want a description for your board. Um, again, you can make it private, and that can only be means that it can only be seen by people who are owners or users of this board. And once you give it some lanes, um, this board would just, for an example, will have a. Um, a backlog lane, a doing lane, a review lane, and a done lane, typical like um, Kanban style thing. Um, when we finish creating the lanes, we'll save the changes, and we have a board. Um, we can populate this manually the exact same way we did with the work list, by adding a card to each lane as, as we need to. Um, but we'll make this automatic, because that's a little bit more interesting. Um, so as you can see, it's the exact same way of doing things as with a work list. You just set some criteria. So we want this lane to be filled with tasks that are in the storyboard project group, um, which means any projects that are storyboard projects, um, and also tasks status is to do. So we save the changes, and now we have a backlog lane that's filled with the to do tasks that are in this test instance of storyboard. Um, and we can do the same with the doing lane. Same process again, tasks matching um, storyboard project group and the status of doing or in progress. And this will come out exactly the same, or, but with different tasks, if I ever remember how to type. <laughs> so yeah, just click Save and save the changes. And now we have it. And we could do the exact same thing with review and done, but there's no really much point doing that. I don't think anyone has interest in watching a board be configured. Um, so does anyone have any questions about Storyboard? Um, 
that aren't here. Or we can talk about these if you prefer. Go on. Hi. Um, so is there something analogous, since this is now the bug interface, to what we had in Launchpad, where you would go to um, you know, launchpad.net slash cinder and could just automatically put a bug towards cinder through that? Do um, we have that kind of organization? Um, yeah, so there's a project page in Storyboard. You can search for projects and find the cinder project, for example. Click on that project, and it'll give you a list of all the stories which are in that project. Um, you can look at all the active stories, which means there's a task that's not merged or invalid, or all the merged stories are invalid stories if you want to. And on that page, there's a button to add a new story, which will automatically populate the like the default task with Cinder as a project. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, that, that's, that's currently in the request list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I think there was an, an open story still um, outstanding where we've, we've had some requests for uh, having human readable project IDs as an option. Yeah. So basically, if, if mm -hmm. I go to you know, storyboard.openstack.org slash sender, yeah. Um, yeah, right. then yeah. that could take me. It probably would yeah. just be an a, uh, immediate redirect into the, yeah. the numeric project ID, but as, right. a, as a convenience uh, for people who don't like you know, want to keep bookmarking all these things or, yeah. or yeah. going through yeah. the search yeah. every time. Searching. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, of course, we just started a new project and dutifully followed the project creator's guide, which makes no mention of storyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, wish list request, that, that should probably be updated some. Maybe yeah. you're already planning that. Yeah. yeah. There should awesome. be a patch and review for that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we should probably get that version. We will, and we will go ahead, looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. I can follow up on that. So with the project relationships, do we have a plan yet for Nova Cinder, you know, some of these that are gonna have to be the great migration where they, we flip the big switch and all right. go? So the very lofty goal is to have this done by the end of Queens. And so somewhere in the last, I don't know, maybe milestone or whatever, we would go and run the migration scripts and get everybody else moved over. We do have uh, half a dozen things that we want to like get done and polished up in terms of implementation for like the vulnerability and management team stuff before we do that big last migration. But ideally the end of Queens or somewhere in the beginning of Rocky would be the goal. Any yeah. plans for project groups? Um, Any recommendations? Yeah, we, we do already have project groups in Storyboard. We didn't really mention them very much in this talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so project groups, we have, you can, I think it's in the project config file, you can pick a group which. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, multiple. Yeah. You, you can put a yeah. project in as many groups as you want. Um, for, for the ones that have migrated so far, I've been trying to kind of pick some same grouping for them. So for, um, Example, the, the ref stack and inter oh. you should just keep it. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, so for the the ref stack and interop uh, repos that moved recently, um, you know, there's a ref stack group and a re an interop group mm -hmm. that they're all their uh, repositories are, are grouped in in Storyboard. Um, mm -hmm. they, they mentioned Infra was the the first team to migrate um, a couple of years ago, in fact, mm -hmm. and we put all of our Infra re repos like you know. Uh, 120 or however many our, our team has as deliverables into a group so that you know we can mm -hmm. we can reference those um, as a project group and storyboard as well yeah. yeah so the storyboard itself it's got I think one project for the API yeah. one for the web client one for the config it's great. Mm -hmm. anybody else okay. so are on these statuses are we limited to to do in review and merged no, that was just the example. I think, okay. it, yeah, it's, I think to do in progress, review, merged, and invalid for, yeah, yeah. if it's okay, a task that's good. right. I, yeah, that seemed sorry, a little, yeah. little light, <laughs> no, so. A little black and white. Yeah, yeah. good, thank you. Cool. Yeah. Fuck. The projects that have already migrated, what have they done with their launch pad? 
depositories or accounts, whatever. I don't um, want to explain it. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 so, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you <laughs> Just hold on to one. <laughs> yeah, I think Manasco is still okay. using it sometimes. Can we get something. the microphone? Or, oh, awesome. actually, yeah, you don't have to hold on to it. No, you can stand nearby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can still stand up here with us, Jeremy. Yeah, we'll lean toward you. Be great. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Launchpad lets you set um, bug tracking to uh, disabled, effectively, mm -hmm. um, so that the, the bugs that are there are still readable. Um, but people coming along can't open new bugs on Launchpad. Mm -hmm. um, so for the most part, that's what we've done is you do that and then update like your project description in Launchpad that says, this is the URL to our bug tracker. And that way if people are finding the old Launchpad entry for, for your project, um, then they know where to go for, for bug filing from that point on. Right. We've also been trying to send emails out to the like um, operators mailing list so that they know that storyboard is coming to and they'll know where to go to file bugs and stuff. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Yeah. And, and also I, I would say one other thing that, um, that Infra has done and I, I, I would recommend other projects as they migrate to storyboard to do also is we update the readme files uh, or it's either readme or contributing um, in the top level of all of our repositories, um, you know, where you'll mention here are links to our contributor workflow and so on. And, you know, we, we explicitly mention a link to this is where to file bugs for uh, this project so that uh, mm -hmm. people know where to go if they're looking directly at the source code as well. Yeah. <laughs> I have another one, sorry. That's um, good. Great. This is what we're doing this for. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you said blueprint migration won't happen automatically. Right. Um, okay, so as we replace that with storyboard, mm -hmm. our blueprints are now going to be instead new stories and tasks. Yep. Is there any um, uh, planned way of marking what are new feature requests versus bugs? We have talked about like an official set of tags so that you could filter and be okay. like, oh, these are just the bugs or these are just like the new features. I don't, we haven't done a whole lot of work towards that yet, but it's definitely no, like you can make your own definitely. tags right now. Yeah. Um, but we could make a, like official ones. So I, I would think that having something consistent across all the projects would mm -hmm. be helpful there. So yeah. that would be one request mm -hmm. so that we can find what's features versus bugs. Make like a story for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get on that. Just to follow up to that, I am a storyboard user in another community also. Mm -hmm. And there we don't have official tags. But we simply wrote on a wiki page, these are the tags we use for these purposes. Mm -hmm. And that works for us. I don't know that yeah. it will necessarily work for OpenStack like that. But that's one way to do it until yeah. that happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think one reason for not migrating blueprints has been that there's a push towards specs repos for mm -hmm. what blueprints were previously doing. So that's the reason to maybe, maybe it's not the place to do that, I think. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, one, one thing that we did discuss along those lines was the possibility of augmenting the migration script to just also import uh, open or active or whatever blueprints yeah, as new stories as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I, I guess there's a little bit of background, mainly Blueprints in Launchpad are sort of there as a a, uh, uh, a solution to the shortcoming that Launchpad bugs have of only being able to have like basically one bug task per project. Mm -hmm. So while I, I think you, you mentioned that that Launchpad was not really cross project friendly, it's cross project mm -hmm. friendly as long as as you consider that there's only one task to do in a given project and branch to to fix a bug. Um, so Storyboard kind of addressed that by letting you have multiple tasks in the same project as well as in different projects within a story. Um, and thus, the need for blueprints is kind of obviated. But yeah, if we can yeah. import mm -hmm. blueprints as stories, then maybe that also solves the use case for the people who are still relying on those. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Perhaps projects could have separate boards, one that's for the bugs tracking and right. one for, for, store, uh, you know, for new features. So. Yeah. I guess that's also kind of up to each of the projects. Yeah. 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 It's just a uh, just new way of thinking about it. So. Yeah. And, uh, cool. I think the other thing that didn't get mentioned, but there's a, there's a kind of a synergy uh, in the implementation of the tagging 
and work lists or boards as well, right? So yeah. you can you can mm -hmm. use the existence of one or more tags as a filter for building a work list. So you can yeah. very yeah. easily populate a work list by just yeah. tagging yeah. stories or tasks with yeah. the tag that corresponds to that work list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions? No. Cool. 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 Okay. Well, cool. If you have any other questions or any other things, come drop in the storyboard channel and we can answer your questions or direct you to the story to add comments if there's a problem you've encountered or read our wonderful blog posts that we've sent out to the mailing list that nobody seems to know about. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We're in hash storyboard on IRC. It's not hash OpenStack storyboard or yes. anything. Yeah. So just Important hash storyboard. distinction. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank okay. you very much for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>